This is the team and the technology that achieved what was thought impossible, communicating with patients so brain injured they were presumed to be in a vegetative state, awake but not aware. Okay, folks, if you'd like to come to the brain activity of patients was compared with that of healthy volunteers like me. We were all asked to imagine playing tennis in our head whilst real-time brain images were captured using an MRI scanner. So what does simply thinking about tennis do? It stimulates activity in the premotor cortex, part of the brain which controls movement and creates this distinctive orange pattern on the brain scan. The team then asked me a series of yes and no questions, such as whether I have children. I imagined playing tennis each time they gave me the correct answer. We, it seems to us that you've played tennis every time you wanted to say yes. Is that correct? Correct. They got my answers right every time. The same approach was used with a Belgian man who'd been unresponsive for five years and he was able to show that he knew his father's name. The fact that a, a patient who's unable to communicate in, in any way by moving or speaking can communicate, can answer yes and no questions just by changing their brain activity, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, tremendous, a tremendously exciting situation for us. This extraordinary technique has huge implications for patients who are only apparently in a vegetative state and could be used to involve them in their future treatment decisions and even whether they want to live or die. Even the smallest body movements can be used to help patients communicate. Specialists in low awareness assessment say the new scanning technique could help prevent patients being wrongly diagnosed. I think a lot of the patients are slipping through the net basically and I think this just adds another layer of, um, of safety to ensure these patients are assessed correctly. And it could mean that patients who for years have had no voice might finally communicate with the outside world. Fergus Walsh, BBC News.